Hi right, guys, welcome, Ryan here for The London Craftsman. How are you? Today's video is all about comparing two router trimmers. On one side, we've got the Katsu router trimmer, cordless version. And on the other side, we've got the Makita branded version, corded. These are the two that we're gonna be comparing. So stay tuned, watch to the end, and I hope you enjoy. Okay, so I've been testing this Katsu router for the past couple of days. Sean's been using it as well. Um, and my personal opinion to start with is it's a great little piece of kit. We just talk about how much it actually costs. I'm buying this from Amazon or eBay for about 80 odd quid. You could probably pick them up for 75 all the way up to 100. But just remember that does not include your battery or charger. Um, if you're gonna be buying a competitor, so the Makita version, but corded, cordless, should I say, you're gonna be looking at 180 pounds just for the bear. So you've got the bear Katsu, 80 pounds, or you've got the Makita bear, 180 pounds. So as you can see, I've already got my own kit because I'm a Makita man. Um, all of my kit in the workshop and on site are Makita, um, 18 volts. So you need to take that into account. If you're a Makita person yourself and you've got the battery and charger, it's probably worth your while. If not, just take into account that it's gonna cost you another 30 or 40 pounds to get yourself a Katsu charger and battery but also you can also get the Makita battery or charger too so it's up to you what you want to do on that um, side of things but let's roll on to its competitor and the Makita and in particular the corded version of the Makita router trimmer um, they feel like they both got exactly the amount, same amount of power but saying that I've only been using round over cutters um, 1.6 millimeter round over cutters for my arises. Right, so it's brushless, just like the Makita. So it gives you a nice quiet operation. You don't have to change any brushes. Um, this particular model, corded version, isn't brushless, but it's still quiet operation. Um, well, while I've got both of my hands, I could do a little test. And weight wise, to be honest, there's not much in it. Um, I have got quite a heavy duty battery in there, it's a 3AH, you can get a 1.5, so they're gonna be lighter weight and they're gonna be smaller, so I'm guessing if you do that, they're both gonna be sort of like similar weight. This is ever so slightly heavier, I'm gonna say maybe 100 grams, 200 grams heavier. I haven't got any scales to test it, but I'm guessing that's about right. But, um, I really do love this machine, I really do love it. Um, the value for money and the, the fact that it does everything that this does, for half the price um, is fantastic for me. And if I get my maths right, I could buy two of these plus a spare round, round over cutter for the same price as one of these, which I think is fantastic. So remember, if you're also just starting out and um, cash, you know you're short of cash or you're buying lots and lots of tools, you need to buy routers, planes, saws, all that sort of stuff, it all adds up. So saving money where you can is probably a good thing. And the fact that it's actually gonna work with all of your Makita goods is another bonus, isn't it? Right, so let's talk about the pros and cons of these two lovely machines. So for me, the pros on this side are that the fact that it's just dirt cheap. Um, it takes the Makita batteries and it's brushless. And also when I use it, I turn it on, it's got a soft start which is fantastic, it sounds nice, feels good in your hands. It's actually, you know, when you've, when you've got a power tool and it's heavy, um, it actually is a sign of quality for me. Did you just see that I had to press two buttons there to turn the machine off? Well, to turn it on. It's a bit weird, this one. I think the Makita corded version has got the same thing. It's got a lock and an unlock button first. If I press it, you can actually see a little LED light coming on, which it activates the machine, then you press your power. And you can use either button to turn it off. You know, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. Safety is a good thing. Um, bad thing, I guess, for this is that you need to press two buttons to activate it. So I guess that is a negative for this machine. Any other negatives? The brand itself, 
bit untested, how long will it last, who knows. I've had this for a few days, so I cannot tell you how long this is gonna last. It might be months, it might be years, but after all, I bought this from Amazon. Um, they do have a couple of years warranty, I believe, um, with their products, so if it does go wrong, they're always great at taking things back. Right, so they're the pluses and minuses on this um, Katsu cordless version. Remember, this is brushless. We're gonna move on to the corded version. Um, plus points, it, it's a Makita brand. Tried and tested over years from thousands and thousands and thousands of Makita fans and all different trades people, light use or heavy use. It's made solidly, you know it's gonna stand the test of time. It's made from quality parts. It's got a nice quality feeling switch. It's got a variable speed, but to be honest, they both do. They make quality tools, and there's probably not many brands better than them. You know, we could compare them. Maybe not compare, but they're up there. You know, we've got Festool, and we've got Milwaukee, and we've got Dewalt, but everyone's got their own preference. This is my preference. I love Makita. I love the color. I love the feel. Um, and overall, I just love the brand. Um, this Makita trim I've had for about two years. We've got two of them. We use them day in, day out, as you can see on the bench. We're constantly using these. At the moment, we're not really putting them to their full use. We're just taking off the arises of materials, taking off the sharp ed edges, but they do the job brilliant. Okay, so let's see it in action. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this on as well, just to give you a little comparison of the sound. I feel it's a little bit noisier. I'll turn it on. Got a soft start, which is fantastic. It sounds nice, but overall it feels like a nice quality machine to use. Right, leading on to the negatives of this machine. Can you see what's hanging off the back of it? Big heavy duty cord. It's plugged into here, it's not particularly long, it's probably two and a half meters long. I, as you can see here, I've got an ultimate workbench build. So if you're interested in that, click on the link above. And I don't want to have to trail this cable all the way around. After all, it's 3.6 meters long, 1.6 meters wide, size of a full size snooker table, believe it or not. Um, so the cord really does get on my beep. This is why I love the katsu. Let's just imagine this didn't have the cords. I'd probably love it even more. So I'd say that is the negative for this machine. Um, it hasn't broken on me yet. The brush, the brushes in the machine haven't needed changing. So, you know, I'm gonna say I still really do love that other than the fact that it's got the cable, the cords. All right, so I think it's time for a summarization. Is that a word? Sean, is that a word? Summarization? <laughs> Anyway, let's summarize these two bad boys. Me being a bargain hunter and the fact that the value for money on this is so good and the fact that I can't really tell the difference between the two, it feels like the same quality, feels like the same um, power. I'm gonna go for Katsu all day long. 80 quid, I can buy two of these and a spare round over cutter for the price of the corded, cordless version of these Makitas. Um, I still wouldn't turn my nose up at one of these. Um, they do what they say on the tin. But other than that, I think I'm being swayed over to this side, value for money side. So whilst I've got you here, um, I'm gonna give you a little hack. Um, hopefully I can do one of these every video that I do every Sunday. And this one is with a tape measure to check the squareness of a board without a ruler or a square. Right, so the cameraman is um, going freestyle on this one. He's brave. This is the three, four, five trick. So what you do is you get your tape measure and you go 300, mark 300. Remember you could do centimeters, inches, mils, whatever you wanna do, depending on how big your piece is. Then we go 400. I'm using millimeters. 300 mil, 400 mil. I'm gonna use the 100 of my tape measure because I don't want to use the tip because it's not very accurate and this should equal to 500. I'm using the 100, so it's actually gonna add up to 600. There we go. And that is telling you if your board is square. Remember, I can double check that. I could put that on the tip roughly 
and move that over and it should make 500. Three, four, five, and that is how you check a board is square. Keep the noise down, Sean. All right, guys, I wanna thank you all for watching. Remember to stay tuned for next Sunday's video. As you know me, I'm all too well probably by now. I don't plan my videos very well, so who knows what it's gonna be. Something to do with woods or spraying, most likely woods. Um, take note that we've got 23,000 YouTube subscribers, so thank you very much for that. If you wanna be that extra number, feel free to hit that button and follow us. Every Sunday is our thing, every Sunday at eight o'clock in the morning. Brilliant. Also, we're on Instagram, do lots of stories, reels, posts. If you wanna follow us and see us live inside the workshop um, quite regularly, that'd be great too. So one other thing, head over to Bears Workshop UK. He's got a YouTube channel and he's got an Instagram channel. Absolutely fantastic woodworker. Follow him just for his tools, if anything else. He's fantastic at making tables, anything handmade, but you wanna have a, have a look at his tool collection. So take it easy, guys. Have a good one. Ciao for now. <coughs> I'm trying to think, what else do you make? Uh, handmade furniture. Handmade furniture. Handmade yeah, and he's got, all right, yeah, yeah. And so, he teaches. Okay, <laughs> so one other thing, head over to Bears Workshop UK. He's got a YouTube channel and he's got an Instagram channel. Um, keep the noise down, Sean.